Romeo, Romeo. Don't get crushed by a brute, Romeo. From Halo 3 ODST, one of our leading members, this is Halo Heroes Series 2, Romeo. Part of the second run of Halo Heroes, Romeo released alongside five other Halo Heroes in the same wave, notably recognized using a translucent orange base plate, connected to a sloping brick of a similar size with the name Tampo on the front. Behind that is a spot for the modified 1x1 one one to link up the acrylic rod, a transparent piece allowing the figure to not only stand securely, but to adjust for a flight pose, running pose, or anything you could think of. Romeo comes with a sniper rifle, you know, the weapon he was like, eh, whatever, I guess. Nice long weapon that fits, and includes a moving stand. With Halo Heroes, there's an extra level of paintwork. The exclusively painted weapon gets an addition of black and silver over the dark gray. Typical fashion with the ODST figures of the game with the modern articulation, so he fits in well with any others you might own, but still customized to his preference black undersuit with two shades of gray armor. At the time of his release, ODST figures were given more customizable options. He comes with the larger shoulder piece protecting himself, and the ODST helmet with headgear attachment, painted with a slightly different tone of gray and a touch of dark blue. Perfect equipment for someone using the sniper. Adding to the paint, the helmet features a black addition and dark blue stripe, the chest is painted over with dark blue, the shoulder pauldron has a few stripes, and the hands feature fingerless gloves. If you're looking to build up your ODST army, or at least the known crew from the game, Romeo's pretty good. I still prefer Dutch and Buck more, but of course, how can I say no to the addition of more ODST figures? Check it out if you can find it, but keep it away from the brutes. Does anyone here like the Gungnir armor? Yeah? Oh, sorry. I meant the 343 Gungnir, my mistake. Part of the Halo Heroes series 2, this is the Spartan Gungnir. Typical of the Halo heroes, the figures and sometimes the weapons feature additional paint applications and a base. Built from four parts at the time with a tampo label of the Spartan Gunganeer, trans orange base for all of Series 2, and clear rod to plug in for alternate posing options. He includes the Forerunner style light rifle in the industrial skin, painted with a nice addition of gold that not only lets the weapon shine, but it breaks up with the grate underneath, really bringing in the molded details. Can plug onto a knight, or of course can be used as a handheld piece. I'm not really fond of the Gunganeer armor. I mean, I don't hate it, but the helmet looks like a blob of tech trying to mold into a face but forgot the elements of what makes a face. I like the yellow dot for the eyepiece, but without the visor, it's those creatures from New Mutants without the slender body. Besides that, the newly articulated Gunganeer based on Halo 4 and 5 looks pretty good with the white lines breaking up the figure. This is the pulse skin, showing a pulse paint effect from the torso to the legs. Anyone hungry for a creamsicle looking at this? I would not walk into a battlefield if your skin choice is a target. Actually, I wouldn't walk into Target with all the people mistaking this guy for customer service. Which fight would you prefer, the fight against the Covenant or Karens? Black undersuit with orange armor, which we've actually seen a basic form of this in another set. It's a bit sloppy in the body, but better than I had expected, especially with white against a deep orange. Runs even to the back, the head paint is super crisp, and on my copy, the neck has some stripes. Well, I might not like the gunk near so much with the lumpy head design, but with the fine sharp lines, it breaks it up enough to make me turn away that critique. I think the paint really stands out. Might not be my favorite armor, but out of the gunk nears using the mold, this is probably the best. Even if he might be a cyclops. If you ever thought that a swap monster paint job on a Spartan would look scary, one, I don't know why you had that thought, and two, you didn't expect this armor type. This is the Halo Heroes Series 2 Spartan Scout. Typical with the early Halo Heroes, they come with an included stand base. Bottom has a transparent piece with the color sorted for the series, block with the Tampa name of the Spartan Scout, and clear rod for alternate poses. The Scout uses the classic mold of assault rifle. With Halo Heroes, you can expect additional paintwork, so there's a good amount of silver and dark gunmetal covering the black plastic. In addition, this is using the teeth skin. I wish the face was larger, but the paint is well made. I've always taken a liking to the Spartan Scout armor. Maybe it's something about the sharp design, fierce intimidating visor, or the black trim they bothered to apply. 
Either way, it's a personal favorite. The new articulated mold also plays a personal favorite with its color scheme. It's like someone took a highlighter to the Alpha Series Scout. I love a dark color with a light green trim or lines. Whoever made this probably knows me. This is the Toxic Skin, which I can't help but think of the green rock sheep, put in a laugh track. <laughs> the undersuit is black with green armor and lime paint apps. The deco runs through to the back to the large shoulders. It may be a little messy, you can see it leaked on pieces it shouldn't be on, but it makes the helmet pleasant, and I mean, I can't say no to this. I'm not sure if anyone will feel the same as I do. Most of my opinion is personal preference, but I am loving the deco, and they chose the scout armor, even if it's a bit messy looking, I like it. And if you dare say anything bad about this, I would respectfully disagree, but also pull your toenails off. Weapons, armor, and ammo packs have been around for a while, usually containing a small build set up to display or store your accessories. As well, it was a cheap way to get a figure. Most of them were pretty basic, so when this came around with a marine like this, it sure was a surprise. A marine absorbing the presence of a jungle camo Darth Vader. All the scary without the bad, this is 2014's UNSC Weapons Pack 2. Although I think this is actually the 5th or 6th, but who's counting? Apparently not 2012's Weapons Pack 2. This setup follows with the release of Halo 4. It features weapons and a figure based on the game. Of course it wouldn't be a weapons pack without weapons. I mean without it by definition it would just be called Pack 2! All handheld weapons besides one can plug into this very simple stand with the DMR requiring a clip adapter. The set comes with a simple black tactical shotgun and simple black grenade launcher. However, exclusive to the set, if the figure didn't get you, it comes with painted decorated weapons too. The assault rifle in black has a few stripes of light gray and the DMR molded in black has some orange lines painted across. This is the weapon I usually display him with, because the orange convinced me. The figure also includes a green backpack, probably to store ammo and grenades. That's right, I'm seeing a connection. As well, if that's not enough, he has a machine gun which could also be held. Or you can clip on the shield, handlebars, and stand to set it up as a station gunner. No problems with options. The heavy-duty UNSC Marine based on Halo 4's design is using the old-style articulation. No multi-joint shoulders or elbows, but that's only because I bought it on the first run. 2014 was a transitional year for the human figures, and just in time, the secondary release received the new joints. Don't I feel like a sucker? I'm not bummed. While the design is outdated, this certainly uses the wash to its favor. With the black, green, brown, touches of gray, and tactical gear, I would be convinced this is a future Rambo if he was frozen in time before Last Blood. We should have gotten more of this, plain and simple. An army building pack is a good start. I love the face mask and vibrant green visor. Even if the gray bleeds into the helmet, the rigid gear and serious tone makes me thankful he's on our side. I wonder what he could do with the knife in his- on oh, second thought, I don't want to know. With the setup, everything displayed on the base plate can be removed to add these to other sets or have them off in the surrounding area. You get a basic stand to port weapons made from four parts, a fusion coil in silver with trans yellow inside, and stacked sandbags. With it all together, the marine could make a stand, but this guy looks like a savage. As cool as he is with his armament, as much as he feels at home, I'm convinced he has bullet immunity just by his cold hard stare. He could probably just walk up to a brute and chew it off. Take a good look at this and try to convince me this isn't a badass looking figure. The equipment is perfect to go along with him. They didn't even need to paint up the weapons, but if they're gonna go all out on the figure, might as well give him the appropriate armament. If you want the updated version, then that's all well and good, but I think there's something about the line and mold here that simply cannot be replaced. I fear no man, but that thing... Oh, those Covenant Rascals really don't know when to quit, do they? Just when you think they're down for the count, they sneak up again in some form. Comprising at least one Lance member, these Remnant units were formed. This is the Mega Constructs Halo Shields of Requiem Lance.
The only fire team pack from this wave comprising of Covenant members, this mercenary team could easily be army built, featuring perfectly generic soldiers of different species in that widespread proud purple color. If you're building up your armada, this is perfect. Funny enough, this mixes well with the Covenant Stormlance set, with the similar metallic purple armor and figures of the same ranks. That is, if you're not picky about blending old and new figure molds with the updated jackals and grunts. Set includes four tan base plates. Weapons include the 343 fuel rod gun. No green insert, pure gold, but at least the grunt looks intimidating. There's a plum needler and shield for the jackal. Plasma pistol for the storm elite, which I think he regrets that trade. And the plum storm rifle for the elite ranger. The Covenant Storm Grunt Miner is the most modern take for the new body in the 343 design. It's also the most versatile. These now include customizable armor. As long as it works with the fishbowl head design, not only can you swap the armor, but the entire color or just have a grunt nudist. They're newly articulated too, no elbow, but now they have a multi-joint shoulder, ball joint hips, and feet rotation. They may be large, but it allows them to do so much more, like allow a clip point in the arm for Spartans to play to thrash around. Same thing with the Covenant Jackal Miner. Took them long enough, even if the arms and mid legs are the exact same parts used in the elites. With that, they have very similar articulation, including the triple leg action. The new torso design seems to fit really well, and they still seem to have a very hunched over design. You are able to add armor to the shoulders, and the head has some paintwork. Teeth is goopy, but the eyes are crisp. The Covenant Elite Miner in matching armor colors was one of the first using the new articulation in the Covenant ranks. I just realized the jackals are a hand-me-down. With a dash of silver, duller skin color than the jackal, removable helmet, and triple leg motion that benefits the height, these are the most used 343-era elites and appropriate for a troop pack. Looking for an upgrade, this set comes with an additional elite in Ranger form. Opposed to the Miner, this one uses black instead of the flesh tone, and includes modified leg armor, lower legs, shoulder armor, chest armor, and of course, the specialized helmet. The metallic purple also seems to be very common. About three or four other Rangers share this in different sets. How is there so many? Guess I can set up a squad. Anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. I'm depressed. These fire team packs usually come with extra builds. This set includes an additional energy shield and a covenant turret that seems to have gained a bit of weight. People seem to take issue with how bulbous it is to make room for the launching gimmick, but it looks better than the UNSC version. I think the solid color, chunky smooth surface, and lack of paint makes it too toyish. For those who are confused because, well, it's a toy, saying this implies it lacks a realistic feel from a smaller scale. There's some built-up vegetation. I do like the firing feature. The projectile seems better than some from the competing brand. There's also a spare behind the shield. You can clip a figure to man it, and the whole thing moves up and down as well as rotate. What's with the different colored base plates? Tan for the figures, green for the builds? Now, I may be a simple man, but I can't be the only one who thinks that's a weird choice. Did they just stomp a bunch killing the grass? Stay off my lawn. As an army building pack, this is perfect. It uses very common classes for the Covenant in a very common color. The additions work well with them. And with how many UNSC packs we tend to get, I'd recommend grabbing a few of these to stack up. Aye, Remy the Grunt carries the big gun. You will worship me and my power. I should have never made that trade. With the UNSC teams blazing about and flamethrowers torching banished enemies, sometimes you just need to chill. And that's where this team comes in. Perhaps one of the most sought after fire team packs, this is the Mega Constructs Halo UNSC Blizzard Squad. I think there were a couple of reasons why this was desperately wanted. It was the single newest fire team pack of the wave that came after a wave already full, so stocks weren't coming in quickly, and that this was a very unique squad. I remember how exciting it was to get a UNSC Arctic Combat Unit, but this isn't just regular figures in white armor to hide against the very real Yeti, I swear it's real. 
This team specializes in Cryo Freeze Mumbo Jumbo Techno Gizmo. The set includes three base plates, so one of them's gonna have to share. The third iteration of the classic assault rifle with attachment points on the barrel and top, a DMR with similar barrel attachment point and clip at the bottom for handling, and two not so flamethrowers. These are repurposed to shoot the cryo spray. For the effect, you can attach these included flare pieces with solid colors mixed. Plugs right into the front so you can freeze a grunt's head and smash it like Jason. I like the colors on the UNSC Marine. I like the solid smooth white under the dark gray and black tactical gear. Really brings out both colors. This seems like the Halo 4 to 5 design, but it's close and intended to work along Halo Wars 2 figures. Even the helmet looks sharp, and I love the metallic blue shades, but why is he crying? Is it the paint error? With the side pouch on the one leg, the other seems bare and thin, but nothing too worrisome. The UNSC Marine officer reuses everything from the neck down, with the exception of the head sculpt. No helmet, but does have a sweet cap, and apparently no soul in the eyes. They use tiny holes to get the pupils instead of paint to avoid the face. The successor to the original Flame Marine and a twist to the Flame Troopers released around the same time, this set includes two UNSC Cryo Troopers. For a sod after set, this helps easily gather and army build this specific unique player. With the dome-shaped helmet protecting him from every corner, heavy suit probably to keep him warm, and boy, where did you get those boots? You can tell there's a purpose for this type of trooper. The head joint is limited, but with the shoulder pads and no attached armor, the shoulders still freely move around. Using the specialized pack piece and parts to build the containers, you can build and attach the backpack, gear up for action, and properly set up Mr. Freeze's gun. Alright everyone. Chill. But what do shades get? The set includes a mounted turret. Much like the Covenant one, it's bulbous to insert a launching projectile gimmick. In my opinion, not as well integrated as the Covenant. And the shielded piece looks like it's not much help. No place to store it, but there is a spare projectile. I do like the cryo tank hookup using the old hose returning from the original Flame Marines. And guess what? I don't feel too restricted by it. Isn't that refreshing? So, while the cryo troopers are freezing the banished at its tracks, the marine can step in with his own cryo power. The officer can supervise. Implementing the cryo technology into a fire team was a grand idea. This is a very specialized unit with a unique tool that deserved multiple figures. I'd say, if you can grab it, certainly do. Now for the quiz. In this review, how many times did I use the term cryo? Was it A, too many? And you're correct. If the terrifying monsters of the Flood invade, or the Banished rage in to take over everything in their path, sometimes you need a special type of Inferno to stop it in their tracks. From Mega Constructs Halo, this is the Kansano Cyclops Raid. In line with the Halo Wars 2 game, Kansano commanded Warthogs, Hellbringers, and anything that can blast flames to torch everything to ashes. To really get down and dirty, she suits up with a heavy-duty Cyclops perfectly suited for her. We've had Cyclops sets before, early on with very specialized parts and later with more elaborate builds. So, with all those coming into this, how does it stand? Well, let's get into the little things first. The set includes one base plate that's not made from cookies and cream, and a silver updated tactical shotgun. Some could say it's a little bright, but we've seen it in black, we've seen it in gray, let's mix it up a little. First the Spartans, then the Elites, now this. They've updated pretty much everything. This was the first set to change the mold of the Flood Infection form. The body uses a rubbery texture that makes it disgusting and gooey. The feelers are all one piece that plugs in. There's also a peg hole underneath. I'm gonna miss the wash and paint, but I can't leave out the credit of their successes. The legs look like a sloppy wood bug, and the rigid back end really gives that parasite look. Hey, kids, into the slime toys? So why not this? Better yet, how about three of them? Morgan Kinsano seems to be the specialized figure for the set, featuring unique paint applications and a name in the title. But what about Louie, Huey, and Ted? Her body is molded in dark and light gray plastic parts, with metallic green armor and markings of the blue and red on the chest and both shoulders. She does use the female torso and marine armor. Didn't even know they made a simpler undersuit, thought we were stuck with the Spartan mold. She also does have a proper headpiece with painted hair, lips, tattoos, and eyes. 
little weird, but at least they're not soulless pupils. When suited up, you can also use the included Hellbringer helmet. Metallic gold and green colors, but I wish there was somewhere to store it without modifications. Well, that and the head swapped. I find no use for decapitated heads. First, there was the original Cyclops made from very specialized parts to keep the general shape in touch with the game design. Then afterwards, we had the more constructed figures, featuring its own new parts and armor. Looked good, but it was very problematic for its construction. These joints would clip in from a hinge, but the rotational pin was too tight, meaning that trying to move it would easily dislodge the clip entirely. Not to mention the armor pieces that slipped off easily. Bringing in the Kinsano Cyclops, you don't have the same problem. Similar armor plating returns now settled more securely with pins being used. Plus, the ball joints give a wide range of motion without the worry of unintended disconnections. But, while they solved some major issues, they seem to be replaced with new ones. Functionality-wise, they took out any knee joints in the build which means all you get is the hips and toes. It's not like we can't get any poses from it, but it really pulls away from dynamic motions. The heels can adjust, rotate, and the toes are on the combined ball joint, but they're attached by one peg so they can easily slip off. The flamethrowers use a number of pins to keep the shape, and they can adjust easily during play, so keep your attention that you don't just grab it like an animal and make some crumbled mess. Also, if you want to keep the torso to have different angles, watch out that you don't push it down to flatten it. It's definitely not slim, which I think that was the intention, and we should support all Cyclops body types. This is a heavy-duty beast with giant tanks on the back. It's crazy to believe this would stand, even in a sci-fi world with those legs. It does come off as ridiculous though, not goblin ridiculous where it's like hee hee yeah. The flamethrowers are meant to resemble upscale versions of the handheld mold, but brick based to get the size. You could debate if they did a good job, but I approve the shark head decos. Flame pieces are included so I think it can destroy the thing monster. Another deco piece on the shoulder and I can't say no to the articulated finger mold. I don't usually mix Lego sets with mega constructs, but I'm tempted to use these for bionicle sets. Anyone think that head is Shockwave's drone? You could open up the torso, bring in Kinsano, plug her in, and with a few adjustments, she fits in all right. Even the legs go right around the bars. It's not the best sitting position, her back doesn't stay flat against it, and sadly, you can't fit a wraith in it. How could they? Need a spot for the shotgun? Put it on the arm, why not? Arms use the ball joints along with the elbows, fingers have hinges, ball joints in the hips, and we mentioned the toes already. Could use more in the legs, but with the giant flamethrowers swinging around, it makes me forget the problems, because burn everything! I think the Cyclops was in the right direction if they wanted a more brick-based figure, but the execution feels like they were focused on fixing the previous issues while missing the new ones. I don't blame them for the hefty design, I just like the previous slimmer look. Still, a Cyclops with massive flamethrowers is awesome. BURN! Enemies must BURN! Kinsano, that was an orphanage. Mega Bloks and Constructs Halo has had a lot of history at this point with so many sets under its name. If you've collected since the start, you'd remember the six original main sets displayed on boxes and advertising. One set was the largest prize, and with it becoming nostalgic, they decided to bring it back. This is the Mega Constructs Halo Aerial Ambush. Part of the 10th anniversary line of buildable Halo sets, the original Aerial Ambush, which I have, missing only a few parts, was the biggest draw packed with a Sparrowhawk, the first of many Banshees, each of the figure molds of the time, and a turret, which seems to have been forgotten. Besides that, everything returns with the updated molds and vehicles featuring more in-depth builds or suited custom parts. Times have changed, but there's a scent of familiarity. It's like contacting a Facebook friend you hadn't talked to in a while and thinking, he does care. The set comes with four base plates, a plasma pistol for the grunt, which the original grunts never came with. I guess we could call it even for the missing turret, but I'm not happy about it. There's also an updated shotgun for the Spartan, flamethrower for the flame marine with a more flexible tube, and a gold beam rifle. A running theme for the 10th anniversary sets. Some people prefer a proper color and think this is ridiculous, but the line has a pizza gun. Let me remind you, 
A gun has pepperoni on it. Isn't this something? For those who have been with the Halo building block world at the beginning, even if you didn't get the original aerial ambush, you probably grabbed this set reusing similar figures. Now seeing them updated really brings to view just how much things changed. Grunts with separate hip joints? That's crazy! Wait a minute, haven't we seen you before? You can't fool me! This uses the same articulated style design that we've seen before, with new armor and head mold closer to the classic look. Different from the Grunt in the Hornet Blitz, the Breather is removable. Bit of a pain to get on, and now his face looks like Cloverfield. Bluish skin with copper armor makes this a complete tribute to the old Grunts. Look who's grown up and can reach the shelf. Remember how simple and weird the elites were back in the day? Well, that's no longer the case because this is a premium looking Covenant Elite with that original era style. So glad to see Halo Infinite jumped on this too. I like the clean armor that still remains alien, but the helmet is the highlight. Might seem a little big, but sizes up to the Spartans, looks pretty sharp for its size, and really, look at the old ones, we've come a long way. Gray underneath with blue armor, colored similar to the classic form, but now with a triple leg action. He is your superior. At the time, all we had were Flame Marines and Spartans. Don't know why, but Flame Marines were always exciting to get. This really sucks me back into that joy. The armor detail is absolutely crisp with its mold and texture, especially around the helmet. Those lines over the gold are wonderfully made. Green undersuit, different from the original dark green, but who am I to complain? And great armor over top. We have Marines, we have Hellbringers, but there's always room for Flame Marines. And last on the reunion, the green UNSC Spartan. Of course, based on Halo Wars. Guess it was a good time for the sequel to come out because this is the appropriate mold to use. But not only that, the metallic green is a constant win. We don't get washes as often anymore, but I'll take the metallic deco with no complaints. Does have different shoulder pieces, and the helmet looks good with the gold visor. So glad to see the crew back. But what about the vehicles? It might take a second glance to realize this is the new Hawk design for Mega Constructs, unless you're looking at the glowing yellow cockpit that might tip you off. The Hawk hasn't been seen in too many sets, but the construction is already superior. New parts and subtle to extreme changes don't seem to alter the general shape, but you'll see them nonetheless. The spikes on the wings are miles better than a 1x6 plate. The details on top are way better, and I love how the intakes are built, angled off but locked into place. Inside the cockpit reveals a new console piece, and this does fit a Spartan pilot. Speaking of which, no stickers, thank goodness. Everything you see is a tampo, including the UNSC logo on a large brick. Underneath the wings is a cluster of rockets and turrets attached on ball joints. On the front is another pair of turrets that was given an added up and down joint. Wait, I'm moving these and the turrets aren't popping off? It's true. Mega has come a long way. Couldn't update the back wings, curved plate, and a rectangle, but all right then. Sure, the bright cockpit could be obnoxious, and the paint over it is too thin, but it seems to blend with the metallic green. Also, the large turbines can rotate. That's a bonus. This newly redesigned Covenant Banshee makes me realize that our original Covenant Banshee was faulty. The old one was fragile. I much prefer this cockpit with the metallic blue and the turbines. Well, the turbine says it all, doesn't it? The wings could potentially droop during play as they're connected by clips. Wish there was a locking spot, but there is a stopping point. If you want, you could bring up the cockpit slightly for a different look. And there's a clip to attach a figure in attack formation. I like the purple and light silver. I think they work well together. And that shiny blue with speckle gives it a marbled look. Plus, the molded texture is perfect. I appreciate the tempo parts on the front, and I understand the point, however, it just winds up looking flat. There is a launching feature hidden inside, so you can fire these projectiles. The set also comes with spares. You can open up the cockpit, barely, to find handles and a console for the Elite to pilot. Also an advantage to the original, an included wobbly flight stand. Wait, but what about the Hawk? Am I supposed to use my imagination? Screw that, where's the stand? With all that, I call this one a successful anniversary set. Missing the turret, unfortunately, but since the Grunt has a weapon now, he's no longer let out regardless. The updates really help, and the changes don't overtake it to the point where this becomes a whole different idea. The figures are nostalgic in design, and this is a good piece to people who missed out or want the updates. Team Hawk or Team Banshee, you decide. 
hiding in the shadows to sneak up to the Covenant foe. With the choice of armor for the situation, this UNSC Spartan can strike before they know it. This is the Mega Constructs Halo Covert Armor Pack. Armory packs, or optional sets, aren't anything new. Since we had a broad line of figure molds to choose from, the idea has been around, even overtaking the line for a while. Now, we get these basic sets, similar in line with the booster packs before it. The locker, giving me unfortunate high school flashbacks, is molded in silver plastic with black paint to signify which pack it came from. The locker itself can be held with bars, plugged with pegs on the top, back, and can be attached on a base. Open it up with the somewhat weak hinge and you'll find a wall of peg holes to add the extra armor and specific tab ports on the door for the body armor. Just watch out, I find that the shoulders tend to slip off easily on these specific ports. Taking everything out of the attachments, you get two sets of body armor, two sets of shoulders, and three helmets to choose from, which means the resale value is potentially there. The set also contains a light gray base plate and a silver assault rifle with attachment ports on the barrel and top for the clip pieces. Without modifications, the figure package is the UNSC Spartan Stinger. Interestingly enough, the colors match the deco of the Athlon and Protector from the Warthog Security Patrol. Dark gray undersuit, black body armor, and red in the visor that looks like a disgusting eyeball for a face. The shoulder pads seem to be repeated with a lot of figures, primarily the Flame Marines. Keeping the body and shoulders, you can swap out the head for the Hunter helmet. Hey, you won't hear me complain with that price if you want to call it a discount lock figure. The colors really work for it. Its dark shade and bloody visor makes it look like a dangerous predator. Perfect for the shadow reliant warrior. Swapping everything around and using the other helmet, you will get the... Wait, I've seen this before. Yep, this is the Athlon armor, which I feel they should have done something different considering the exact same thing is featured in the Warthog set mentioned. But I never got that, so why am I complaining? I really dig this hefty, bulky-looking armor. Looks like he could compete with the football robot. This dark set is perfect. All the armors look good in their setups. Plus, you can mix and match if you want more excuses to gather a dark army of UNSC soldiers. I've always liked the black armor against the dark gray and the red pops. Perfect for hiding in plain view. If he knows what he's doing. When we expanded out of Halo Wars from the early days of Mega Bloks, we had gotten so many different armor types before the 343 era. Scout, Rogue, Recon, EOD, Security, CQB, you name it. We thought we were done with the Bungie style after the new articulation, but that all changed. This is the Mega Constructs Halo Siege Armor Pack. Swapping armor types was a big deal for Mega Bloks when the world of building block Halo toys started expanding. Continuing from the booster packs, these locker sets continue that gimmick, featuring optional armor types stored inside. The locker itself is molded from silver plastic with green paint to indicate the set it's from. Attachment points on the exterior include these bars, pegs on the top, back, and peg holes for a base. Open up and you can store the other armor pieces inside, using attachment pieces for the helmet and shoulders, with the door using molded tabs to attach the body armor. Or you can open it up to play with the floppy door, nom 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 nom. You get two sets of body armor, shoulder armor, and three helmets. The set includes a dull base plate and a black SMG with attachment point on the barrel and clip slider on top. The default form of the Spartan out of the package is the UNSC Spartan EOD. Oh, I love the EOD, and I'm so glad to see it make a return in the new line. Funny enough, the only other green EOD in the old design also included additional armor to swap. The more you know... The torso looks smooth yet bulky, along with the shoulders, and the visor seems to be using a black color surrounding it. Looking a little miserable there. What's wrong? Halo Infinite got delayed. It's even got some silver near the chin. Black undersuit with metallic green pieces that doesn't seem to match every piece. The tone seems off, especially on the helmet. While I usually keep them in this form, we've got to take a look at the other types. So let's swap out the chest, shoulders, and helmet for the Rogue Spartan. I do really like the mold, down to the pieces hanging down from the torso. The shoulders go from wide to tall, flowing with the figure silhouette. The helmet is molded really well, and we see the return of a black trim. 
but with a simple swap of the helmet, it becomes the Recon Spartan. Should we call this a black trim pack? Because all the helmets have it, I'm sensing a theme. Now, I love these armor types in general, and I'm happy to see them, but there's a couple of reasons why I prefer the EOD. They hardly made any EODs in this mold, and the Rogue as well as the Recon is pretty much in the Gungus Rampage set. I appreciate the metallic difference, but EOD please. Any nostalgic fan will likely gather at least one of these. The armor types in this new design is very welcomed, especially with the metallic color. If you need to gather more armor types of this era, I'd say this is the pack to get. Especially if you want a Spartan team with eyeshadow. Many Marines make the ultimate sacrifice to keep humanity going. Just that little edge in their favor could mean so much. The Covenant won't get in their way once they deal with the prototype. This is the Mega Constructs Halo Mark I prototype exosuit. After the terrible release of the Marauder that included the first UNSC style exosuit and the demand of a certain suit, the prototype finally released alongside a wave of exosuits. The prototype is based on the short from Halo Legends, also titled Prototype, where one marine says to the other, You are not a giraffe. The set includes a base plate and a basic assault rifle with attachment ports on the barrel and top slider. There's also a decapitated Fred, which has more purpose in the suit. Ghost, no, not that kind of ghost, is the nickname of the main protagonist who redeemed his humanity in the animated short. Here, he seems like the typical marine, as well as he should. Based on the Halo 2 or 3 typical design, the pattern of the new articulated mold and deco was used in a few sets already. An earthy tone and black for the undersuit, black and metallic green for the armor, a skin tone for the exposed face, and a gold visor. Paint on the mouthpiece is a bit sloppy, and he should fit right into the marines. Hell, you can army build this figure and nobody would be the wiser. And if he gets out of line, Ecto-1 should help. The exosuit itself can be assembled without the figure inside, but with some disassembly of the chest and limbs, and with the figure armor removed, taking off the leg armor, shoulder armor, and vest, giving space for the figure to fit inside, you get the full effect even if that head looks weird. That's why we've got an extra Centurion head repurposed into the helmet of the suit. Now the prototype is fully constructed, with a base made of mostly specialized parts and ball joints to give it some decent articulation. Feet, knees, and elbows have free roaming ball joints and the wrist can rotate all without the figure getting in the way. But this is well engineered because despite the figure's limbs, you still get some motion in the legs and in the shoulders. Just be careful here. When you want to move the shoulders forward and back, make sure the arm isn't straight out. The shoulder has to work alongside the pilot's arm, and if you pull it straight out while rotating it, the arm might be out of line inside and might not follow. You've got some specialized armor to go with it, the kneecaps and these large green Gundam shields on the shoulders. While the one arm just has the hand that can hold weapons, the other picked up a trash can, painted a green trim, and somehow turned it into a large arm gun. The parts on this thing are nice and consistent, tough, armored, and robotic. I especially like the legs and the chest with some black paint leading into the lines. Paint on the shoulders as well. It is limited though in some areas. Knees can only go so far and the sleeves might become frustrating for the elbows but it looks too good. Damn that's nice. Transparent green parts just cuz and on the back we've got an itty bitty gun and an OMG chaos gun. Try not to plug this in all the way. The peg could push the black piece off the peg from the inside messing with stability. And no way to bring it forward? So what? Is it only decoration? Oh, and you can try the secondary build if you want big armored pants that get in the way of the posability. Less weapons and less hands. Why would I want this? Not only is this a desired single-use exosuit not even used in the game, but it feels nice to get a very different action figure for the UNSC that doesn't fall apart like the later Cyclops. I did think it would be taller, but I like the size because it feels more adjusted to the scale. I admire the workaround for the figure, and I'm digging it. Who's taller than a Spartan now? What new Marines? While the Halo line seems to contain a large portion of canon characters and sets based on the lore of the games and media, sometimes the toys like to expand off that world, but in a way that could exist in it. This is the Mega Constructs Halo Skyfire Exosuit. You guys know about Jetfire? His original name was Skyfire, but due to copyright issues, it was changed to Jetfire. 
Yeah, well, seems like Halo's shoving it in their faces. Continuing to simply add more to the exosuit wave, but I can get behind this. Maybe as a security protocol suit. Now I'm interested in an NNPD design. The set comes with a base plate in white and a saw molded in black plastic. The Marine is an oddball, seems to share the mold of the new articulated 343 design with a masked helmet. Blue undersuit with light gray and dark gray armor, gold visor, and how can that helmet not be a visual eyesore? I guess it makes sense later, but for now, he has a school bus for a head. With the exosuit, you can attach all the parts without the figure to pilot, but it's looking like a headless horseman, so let's bring in the pumpkin head. Disassemble the armor by the joints and torso, take off the armor from the marine, adjust the arms appropriately, and put it together with the marine inside to power up. The set is similar in its frame with the prototype, as that's the base for all the exosuits, just with alternate builds attached. The bright saturation of two different colors might take away from a serious tone, but that might be a good thing. We have a gray one, we have a dark green one, so why not change it up? The colors scream excitement, and with the custom booster pack and flames jutting out, it suggests this suit could get around pretty quickly, taking out the enemy with two large pistol-like weapons. The weapons are all custom built and attaches using simple rod ports, meaning yes, even marines by themselves can use them, even if it's ridiculous. Most of the joints on the suit use ball joints, and Despite the figure inside, as long as you keep your attention to the arms inside the shoulders, you get a surprising amount of articulation. There's also a surprising amount of silver paint in the lower legs, chest, and both custom arm pieces. Speaking of parts, with the noggin's bright yellow, it now fits in the deco. I even like these cut tiles used simply to spread the colors. Just keep an eye for the round slopes that could hit the head. The back even looks good, and you can rotate the jet boosters around. Now, if only it came with its own flight stand, but if you have one, it should be good. In the secondary build, you lose the jetpack and guns, but you do gain rocket elbows, so, you know... Jealous much? This will likely be looked over for its more crazy colors, and I'm sure more people will be drawn to the other two in the wave, but I'm liking the suit. It's enjoyable, energetic, great for poses, and I can't really complain too much. The fastest draw in the West, partner. The UNSC may bring out all their tools, gadgets, and gear to slow down their foes, but they shall not forget that the Banished has their own weapons and machines. From Mega Constructs Halo, this is the Breacher Exosuit. Why should Decimus have all the fun? With all the other UNSC-based exosuits, the band should have their own. So the Breacher Exosuit was released, a set that seems perfect to army build, especially with destructive brutes manning it. The set includes a gray base plate with metallic and dark gray swirls, and a mauler molded in dark gray plastic. The Banished Brute, or what we like to call on this channel, DOOM BRUTE, uses more dark red than dark gray, much like the ones released in the Arctic Jackrabbit. I love these brutes. They just seem tough, especially given that helmet. Wait for it. Craig reveal. Dark gray undersuit with dark red armor, a slightly different tone of gray for the skin shown, and some silver touches including the helmet. Also two different shoulder designs. It's possible to build the exosuit and leave it complete, but it'll need a pilot to function. Few things to note, the torso armor on the brute is harder to slip on, and on my copy this arm pops off too often. Otherwise, it's the same build. Put the arms in the right way, disconnect the suit, take off the armor, put them in, zoom them up, and wow, that's perfect. Let's remove the weapons to get a good look at this. I love that dark red and gray suited for the Banish, but it gives it a dark demeanor. I especially love how the helmet's round shape fits with the new torso. Even with the colors and the silver on the side, it's like it's all a part of him. That silver continues to the lower legs as well, giving it a damaged style. Not a lot of parts attached, the back seems simple, but why clean it up? This is perfect for the Banished. I could see this in the hundreds taking on UNSC Marines without a care. One issue I have is that the spikes on the Brute inside tend to get stuck within the armor itself and cause some slight complications, but the articulation seems unaffected. The set uses multiple ball joints, and as long as you're careful about the shoulders, the figure inside still allows for the joints to function. Alright, now we bring out the weapons, all using generally known parts, but look at that shield! So basic in concept, but the transparent red surrounding the surface 
surface looks incredible. You can imagine it lighting up with the burning energy, protecting the figure with the white shape. That's not all, the gravity hammer brick base design is pretty cool to see. Not the most stable weapon, I wouldn't use it for intentionally smashing anything, but looks can be deceiving and it looks like it could hurt. I also admire how they got the general shape so I can recognize immediately what this is. The secondary build swaps the arm for a cannon. This is probably one of the better alternate builds, and you know... Any excuse to get a second banished suit to pair up won't be argued. This is a solid addition to the Mega Constructs toys and makes me think they should look into using this idea more often. I love the weapons, I love the power of it, I love the color. Although it should have been made to fully suit the figure, I can't complain about having this. Don't tease the brutes. If you see them in the wild, curl up and cry. Marines are always put in dangerous missions and situations. They might have to go on a daring rescue, escape, or charge into battle. Based on the Halo Infinite line, this is the Mega Constructs Halo Recon Getaway. Even though the name suggests otherwise, no, this set isn't just a Spartan Recon running. One of the smaller built vehicles in the set, the Recon Getaway was probably one of the best valued sets from the Wave. At least in Canada, most sets at this price featured three figures with small side builds or alternate weapons, armor, and gear. This set features four entire figures and even a decent sized mongoose. There's also a two-in-one feature. I'll check it out for this review, but don't expect this for every review. Yeah, good luck with the Pelican. The set features four tan base plates, a purple molded needler for the grunt, a purple molded plasma rifle that's pretty rubbery for the elite, a black molded modern SMG with attachment points on the barrel and top slider, and a black molded tactical shotgun. The set also includes the new part separator all in one piece. Sadly, no satisfying click, but I tend to find this pretty useful. There's one thing I do need to address because it seems very common, not every set seems to follow this issue, but I noticed as soon as I was building these that the ball joints for the neck were too large for the sockets in the head. I had to shave the ball joint just to get it in. You might not have to do that, but keep an eye out for it. I also need to mention that this is one of the best true packs if you're trying to go for even numbers. Sure, it has a mongoose, but for figures, they're simple unnamed soldiers divided with even numbers. The Grunt, now renamed the Grunt Conscript, is essentially based on early Grunt designs. We saw a similar version in the Aerial Ambush, even though it resembles the more recent molds. And this features the modern articulation, as well as armor that you can disassemble for naked Grunt. I keep forgetting to point out that the hands have been so tight on these that they're prone to stress marks. Tan body, orange and silver armor, and the breather is removable. Pretty easy to attach, but also easy to accidentally slip off, so watch out. The Elite, also renamed to the Elite Mercenary, is also similar in design to the Aerial Ambush, which I absolutely love the classic design. Dark blue armor with a black undersuit to change things up. Oh, I love these, the sharp helmet especially. Same modern articulation style with a triple leg action to even surpass the modern marines. He's also the only figure fully pre-built and you don't have to worry about the ball joint head. Now here comes the complicated part, the new UNSC marines for Halo Infinite. These became pretty controversial pretty quickly for reusing the same leg designs from the Call of Duty toys. Why is that a problem? Well, compared to the Spartan and careful who you bully in school. I mean, technically the scale was off to begin with, but it made sense with the toys to me given that they had to work within sets in general that could support different figures. Plus, they might have wanted to even the price point for the most part. Some exceptions, of course, but Marine shouldn't be taller than Spartan. I don't think this was thought to be a change of height, more so they wanted the legs to support pouches that can attach to the side, but hopefully they'll remold this just a tad shorter. I'll just say they made the helmets bigger to protect their non-Spartan skulls. At least they have shoe rotation, taking notes from the grunts. One thing I do like is the removable helmets. Just gives you more display or swap options and exposes more faces that could be beneficial to customizers. One marine with the shoulder pads has a dark skin tone, while the other without the shoulder pads has a light skin tone and that's straight up Walter White. The helmets have a sloppy visor paint, but the overall design is decent. Sand green, gray, and a muddy gray for the armor. These need to be knocked down a bit, but they do look pretty good with their tactical suits. Should be good to army build. The mongoose itself has some updates of its own. I still like the original windscreen, but I don't mind what's going on here. Metallic green and dark gray with silver bars and black tires. Seems simple, but it's a welcome ATV addition. This vehicle is also featured in the Defense Point Showdown set, but multiple mongooses, mongi, mongeese, 
a better joke. Anyways, multiple is perfectly suited. Like I said, the set overall makes for a great army pack, and that's no exception with the Mongoose vehicle. A figure can be seated with his hands on the handlebars, which can steer if you like. You could also bring in a second figure to sit in the back, keeping his weapon deployed. It does become top-heavy, which brings me to the wheels. New to the Mongoose, we've got a new axle system. There's a new brick base beam running through the set where the axles attach, and the axles themselves have a ball joint attachment. They're loose in there, which means when you tilt the vehicle or put it over terrain, the wheels itself will also adjust. This is a very fun feature. The tires spin well, so you can run this over carpet, rocks, or simply use this to turn the vehicle all together. Want to keep it tilted? I notice there's a sweet spot that seems to lock the bars angled off. This is perfect for those dioramas. I guess my biggest complaint has to be the stability of the vehicle. I've accidentally disassembled the back end unintentionally, so that's something to watch out for. And yes, the bars make it seem empty, but for the gimmick, it's a compromise you'll have to decide whether it's worth it or not. As promised, here's the all build. It's some sort of hover ski. A pretty cool idea for kids inviting to take these sets and reconstruct your own things. It's similar to concept, but I have no real attachment to this. Plus, we take off the wheels, that's the best part. Keep your attention on the flaws, but otherwise this is a very basic set that I would suggest as a nice startup or simple addition. What's special about it is that there's nothing really special, and that's the point. It's basic additions to your army, and for that, I love how it fits right in. Oh good, a mongoose that can Tokyo Drift. When you think of the Halo universe and its vehicles, the first thing that comes to mind is probably the UNSC Warthog, but hovering above the Covenant, continue to the Banished, had some classic vehicles of their own. One in particular. This is the Mega Constructs Halo Banshee Breakout. The Banshee's been through a lot, being one of the most reoccurring vehicles since combat evolved. How can I keep up with the evolution? By buying almost every single Banshee ever produced. Well, besides the blue Banshee, anyone got a spare? Using the banished deco and looking like a Banshee fixed up with recycled scrap, this is supposedly inspired by what we'll see in Halo Infinite. The question is, does it fare along its family tree? If you want, you can rebuild it into the skimmer, but then it looks like the Tachari Mobile from the Avengers. The set contains two green base plates, the new shock rifle in a dull pearl blue color, yes it has a name now, and returning the focus rifle in crimson, also the new part separator from most larger sets. The only UNSC base figure, the UNSC Spartan Recon returns now sporting a Reach design, and whoa, this is probably the finest Recon available so far. There's Recons I don't own at the moment, but the metallic green color with a taste of gold sells this. But that's only the base color, it has a black undersuit with an earthy toned secondary color, netting leading to the backpack painted over, sorry Simon, and black touches on the chest. But it really gets going with the helmet. So many components all over presenting itself with more black paint and a thick trim over the orange visor. So glad they went with the Reach design. We've seen so many recons. As a bonus, one of the shoulders includes extra bullets attached. Also for the first time in the series, an Elite Ultra. No longer only seen from the old Mega Bloks articulation style. Now adapted to the modern form with the detachable armor, helmet, and the triple leg motion. It does reuse some components from the elite mercenary, notably the chest, but some key changes include the shoulders and the obvious helmet that now attaches over the head. There was some concern it would look too bulky, but I think they did a fair job. Black undersuit, blue eyes, black on the head, and the armor set is primarily gray. Alone, it's alright. Doesn't look as prototype gray as I'd expect. There's a certain shine, but it is overshadowed by the Halo Heroes metallic deco. Would you like the free version or purchase the Platinum Edition? We've certainly come a long way with Banshees. We could compare this to the original or redesign just before this got released, but I think the biggest mindset comparison is the Banshee Brawl with the Halo Wars 2 Banish Banshee, with qualities that seem to linger into the new form. The Banshee Brawl is honestly one of my favorite Banshees ever released. It's sharp, yet still you can see the classic swoop top cover and triangle-esque wings leading to the turbines. It looks custom-made, 
made and all the more intimidating. But then we got this other take that tries to do different things, yet I'm not sure I like it. Don't get me wrong, it's a banshee nonetheless, but seeing how exciting this was, it feels watered down. I think they wanted to incorporate cleaner elements, like the banished was working with metal junk until they discovered a 3D printer and started making proper parts. If I have to simplify what I mean, this is like a 90s Honda Civic, and this is like giving a Hot Rod fanatic a Mustang after watching Mad Max while sitting at a junkyard. I didn't think I'd like the wings. I mean, we've had forward-facing cylinders, spikes, and discs, but now they've completely innovated the design by hitting delete. I don't mind changes, but I was worried the wings will look too short. However, they don't rest too far down, so from the top view, it seems wide enough. According to all known laws of aviation, there is no way that a banshee should be able to fly. Its wings are too short to get its fat little body off the ground. Not sure how I feel about the custom front. I almost want to call it a bumper. I like the ring, and I dig the piece in general, keeping some of the banished element. But with the empty gap, it looks like it sticks out too far. If it was pulled back, I think it would work fine. You can remove it for a more classic banshee cockpit now with the peg hole, but I have a difficult time removing it. Peg got stuck, so decide ahead of time. I can't blame Mega though, it's based on the game, but can we not have hinging wings? It's a banshee, not a bird. While I step back on some things, those are mostly unsure nitpicks, but there are some good points here too. I like the sides of the vehicle with the smooth body. I feel the wings should be brittle, but it's stable enough, and the shaping is good with a clear plate connecting the two parts. <laughs> The red and silver is still lovely, and I like the more subtle colors. Mostly these with some dark gray and yellow highlights thanks to the generous addition of more projectiles. I can see this making the lines behind the vehicle, but you can use any of them to launch from the front. Inside is the console that's printed on a clear plate, with two handles perfect for the figure to plank inside. There's also two clips that can hold the weapon. No mention of this anywhere, so I approve of hidden features. Can I also make a note of the cut curved plates they repurposed to make intakes? Brilliant! Silver trim on some of the larger parts, and there's a clear wobbly rod on this green base plate. But what's with the two half plates only connected with two pegs each? That doesn't seem stable. If only there was a piece of this size that won't split in two. You know, something like this. Internal disappointment. Like I said, I really like the ring on the front like some visual lens or energy piece. It's like it's staring back at you, saying something about buying an Xbox. I think they wanted to blend the classic look with the Banish considering the game seems to be doing that for a lot of things. But I'm not sure if it worked in the set. I can see people not focused on getting this right away, but in hand, I'm starting to like it more. Plus, it's gonna be hard to skip over that recon, how can you not? And now, the Banshee is off to help another family. With the Banished Army needing ways to travel in and out of battle, they'll need transport vehicles suited for the situation to bring in the numbers. New to Halo Infinite, this is the Mega Constructs Halo Skiff Intercept. While this is a new vehicle introduced to the Banished, there is a huge flaw in the description of the set, mentioning this is a non-playable vehicle. Are you telling me I can't experience Craig while driving the skiff? Okay, someone fire up Blender and Gmod. Something I appreciate from the line, we've had a few years of Halo sets that seem to favor UNSC vehicles over the Covenant. Now, I'm seeing somewhat even numbers, with the skip acting as delivery boy. The set can be rebuilt into a walker and barrier. Not gonna get into it here, but I will say it's a build worth looking into. Maybe even worth buying a second skiff. The set comes with four tan base plates, the shock rifle in an even duller pearl color, the new bulldog molded in black with two handles, connection on the barrel and top slider, a plasma pistol in purple, and two identical manglers with rotating drums in outdated gray. Also included, the new part separator. The only UNSC thing in the set, the new UNSC Spartan Mark 7. I guess they needed this because all the larger set boxes feature figures from both sides on the top. Pretty exciting considering this is a new armor set. Still using 6, Chief? The future is now, old man. The chest seems like a smushed reach armor set, but it is brand new, as well as the shoulders, waist belt, and the helmet. 
I can see elements of former armor types, but looking pretty sharp. Glad to get this in that reoccurring metallic green. Gray undersuit, dark paint on the chest, a spot in the shoulders, and the helmet has paint to bring out some of the details. Orange visor is nice, but I think there's a thin gray trim that's hard to see. It's a bit sloppy. The grunt conscript looks so much better here with that banished crimson color. The orange was like a popsicle that got stuck on his back and started melting over his body. It is pretty much the same mold with the same skin tone, same joints, same ball joint issue, armor setup that detaches for new grunt, and bungee design mask. The banished brute warrior looks fantastic. I can see why they call it a warrior with the detailed armor and that helmet protecting the nose. There's even some eyebrow design that makes me think, I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. I think you can use it for Shredder, but it's awkward when another Shredder joins your party. Both exactly the same down to the weapon, so I decided to swap the shoulder armor. I really like how these came out. Both look like they created their armor from scraps, but with some respect to the craft. I guess the biggest complaint is the rubber kilt. Gets in the way of the leg motion, could warp, and makes it tricky to assemble the waist. Otherwise, these are really fascinating to look at. While the skiff itself is new, it does seem strangely familiar with the proportions of another vehicle. Maybe it takes inspiration, but it's like a Covenant Prowler stretched, hollowed, and now functions like a Covenant Shadow. I was on board with this simply because it's a sizable banished vehicle, but I was taken back. As of now, there's no in-game reference to pick out the accuracy, but even for a banished vehicle, it looks cobbled together like that one Oni set with the Falcon cockpit. I get that it's a troop carrier, but with how hollow it is, it's like buying chips and seeing the bag is mostly air. Am I truly getting my money's worth here? Well, after getting a handle of it, the thing is much better than expected. Many views of the vehicle don't really give you a good idea of some of the best parts. For example, the skids from its anti-stud top view doesn't do justice to the other side that looks pretty good. Even the front curls in an uneven cut like the panels are twisted to make the shape. The set rests on clear round parts to slide around. Underneath, there's multiple turbines that might give us an idea of how this thing moves. I'm guessing with the round cutout and the back ones angled off that can move, I'm guessing they'll move in and out to turn the vehicle. The back end is messy with a very light tan color that probably doesn't work, but this is all appropriate because there seems to be a massive engine inside. Taking the rails out of the picture, you can see it clearly. I really like how you can shift the direction of the pipes, not only up and down, but turned. It's like a wood bug in there. The pilot area has some very interesting details. These pieces usually used for swooping details have some consoles stamped in the back. Both are the same, and the whole system is wildly adjustable. Some sets make inserting a figure difficult, but with the peg molded into the piece, the joint with the seat, and joint with the upper section, there's a lot of play here to help. None of it's fiddly, and despite the rubber kilt, the figure lays down so it doesn't warp. Underneath is a giant rocket, which we'll come back to. The railings have some give, but I assume they're meant to give it some curved frame. This leads into the front section that's beautifully built. Only downside is seeing the open pegs of the cut triangle bricks. It just seems unfinished. Otherwise, I like the grill that looks like teeth, and I like how covered and armored up it is, especially these panels over the curved piece. Ooh, tempo parts! The sides here remind me of those battle damage stickers from the older sets. Ugh, it just feels dirty. Now for the functions. Ew, it's a toy? It's got gimmicks? Ugh! Going back to the rocket, this is hooked up to a gearing system from the bottom that runs to the turret. From here, you can move it along while turning the turret in different directions. The turret is also open to fit a figure but with nothing to connect it. And the turret can launch a projectile. Spares are set on the side. And of course, the point of the skiff. You can fill it up with figures. Only the grunt seems included to fill that void, but I think the point is to invite other figures from other sets to fill what you can. That doesn't look like social distancing whatsoever. It's so strange. It still feels scrambled together or incomplete, but I have a newfound fondness to the set. It's not what I call innovative, but there's a lot here I didn't realize I would enjoy until I built it. I'd say bring up the banished army with this model. Just hook up some balloons and it's the banished Fortnite bus. In the War of the Covenant, a plague re-emerges into the battle far worse than the Covenant could ever be. Feared on both sides, it'll take a special squad to purge the infection from the site. From Megablox Halo, this is the Flood Hunters Battle Unit.
Coming off of the covert op Spartans, even reused in the same colored armor, this set was a Toys R Us exclusive. At the time, some of those exclusives would introduce and use the majority of Flood figures released. With far too little Flood being released limited to a certain retail store, it was good to see a widespread amount of infection forms, infected hosts, and even a brand new Flood design. But we get a small team of Spartans to combat this. The set includes four rectangular base plates, a shotgun second design in black, and the first design flamethrower in grey without any painted details. The set also comes with a missile pod attached to a stand. Doesn't come with the pegs to change it as a handheld piece, but it rotates freely on its base. In the pack, we get a UNSC Spartan Scout as well as a UNSC Spartan EOD. Both UNSC figures are using that old articulation style and the carried over Covert Ops armor color, primarily a steel blue with black highlights, yet no wash, which isn't an issue for darker colors. The scout has flat, long shoulders, a torso reused from the ODST, and a sharp helmet with a singular gold visor. The EOD uses boxy shoulders, chest, and typical helmet with two gold paint apps and white on the cheeks. Both also carry black on the helmet to really bring out that gold. I heard you like flood infection forms. Would you like, hmm, maybe six of them? These disgusting creatures can crawl around, ambushing and taking over the life forms. They did recently remake these in a bigger size with pretty clean molded details, but I like the smaller size. Just imagine these things running around, little scamps. Like tan mold with a gross dark wash and red paint on the, I want to say feelers. They stand on their multiple legs, but you can plug them to a port, maybe have them jump in the air and attack the flamethrower. This is not smart. Poor little guy. You just had a bad day at work. This Covenant Combat Elite has been taken over by the Flood, with a fully infected arm and head with a pretty slick hairdo. There's no extra limb and head to convert this into a normal form, but with the brown paint in between the armor, it wouldn't work anyways. Simple old articulation with nothing for the head, minor wash on the arm, tan paint to highlight the details, red feelers, brown undersuit, metallic purple armor, and blue lights on the chest. No additional weapon, but I think that's the least of his problems. Introduced in the set, and one of the cheapest ways to get it, the set includes a flood carrier form. This is a strange thing. Not only does it show the issue of poor acne control, but despite the almost nauseating design, the legs are pretty normal. Looks like a muddy pair of pants, if anything. The torso is just a massive rubber stress ball with tentacle-like arms drooping down unnaturally, and the head is encased within the creature. The only issue is it can fall over. It's top-heavy, and the arms get in the way of leaning it forward to help stand on its own. Good thing it comes with the plates. Might look weird with the open gap, but there's an obvious reason for this. To store pennies. Or, as the name suggests, you can throw in all the flood infection forms. Looks like popcorn. Tricky to get out, but you can dump them to attack whatever's around. Yeah, that's dirty. Better bring out the Febreze. This is a pretty good simple pack. The Spartans are a nice addition to fend off with, and there's a good amount of Flood figures in many forms. A suitable set to add more Floods to the shelf. I'd say, when this was released, it's a set worth the value. If your pasta looks like this, leave the restaurant.